All right. Um, this is State of Mind. If, if you like what you see, subscribe. We're climbing. We're climbing. <laughs> and I, I have somebody today who... Her, her name is Joyce Guy, and I don't know why Regal comes to my head when I think of her. <laughs> I, it just does, and I respect her greatly. Maybe I don't tell her enough. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but she's done, I, I looked her up, and it, what it said was amazing. It said, over a hundred credits. <laughs> I still can't believe it. <laughs> So it's a beautiful thing, and she's here today, and she plays Phyllis on the hit show, General Hospital. Uh, so uh, I'm excited, and we're going to just talk, and that's it. I, I want to get to know her, because, you know, uh, well, let me, just, let me just say, how you doing? I'm good. All right, good. I'm good. You know, as, as uh, people don't know this, but as actors, we don't, we don't really talk a lot. And we don't get to know each other as much as we, we would want. Not really. Right? No. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm so happy you're here. And I'm glad you asked me because I had, uh, you know, people on, you know, my Instagram. They're like, you got to be on uh, Maurice's show. Even my sister just like, why aren't you on? I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to wait till he asked me. So, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. honored, you know. Where where you where'd you grow up and give me the whole thing? Oh, it's a it's a you know it's a great story. Um, I uh, my father was in the service, oh. and so uh, well my mother and father are both from Montgomery or a little town called Mount Meigs, Alabama. Alabama. And Alabama. I know a lot of people are just like huh really I'm just like yeah, and uh, but my father was in the Air Force, and so um, we were moving every three to two years, and so. I grew up, uh, here's the lineup, by uh, Texas, Taiwan, Florida, Japan, then Kansas, and Delaware. Wow. So that's how I grew up. But that's, a, that's amazing to, to experience all those places. It was. I mean, it's amazing now. I mean, I, you know, I uh, believe me. Well, first of all, you're always being the new kid in school. No, that's not, I don't like and that. And that was not, you know. It's, I hate that. It's kind of, and plus I was the youngest. And so my, you know, I have three older sisters and they were kind of, and my older sisters, uh, my two older sisters, they're twins. And so, yeah, my older sisters are twins. You know, my dad, who just passed I away, uh, he was an identical twin. Okay, well, they're not identical twins, believe me. Um, they're, yeah, that's they're a trip, yeah. <laughs> so, it's a trip to see twins and they're totally different. Oh, yeah, totally different, but they, you know, they're the same thing. They cut their finger on the same day, you know, they buy the same. Oh, yeah, I mean, they're still doing that, and they're like, I'm not going to tell their ages because they'll be mad at me, but they're like you know, older than me. And, um, you know, so my two older sisters, you know, the twins, and then my other sister was a year apart, so they were, you know, always together. And then I had my brother. And, uh, you know, my brother's two years older than me, but of course I wasn't hanging out with my brother. And so he was like, you know, Mr. Superstar, everything that he touched, you know, he was like fabulous. What is he? What is? He? Well, my brother, unfortunately, he passed away. Oh. Yeah, that was, he passed away in uh, 98 um, after I got uh, Sunset Beach, which was, you know, uh, you know, a whole nother story. Yeah. And so, uh, but anyway, so... Um, so in a sense, you know, as the younger kid, as we were traveling all these places, I mean, yes, it was, you know, exciting to go to all these places. But as the younger kid, you know, I was always the new, you know, we're, we were always the new kid on the block. But I was like the, you know, in a sense by myself because my older sisters, they had each other. And then, like I said, my brother, he was very outgoing and very athletic. And so wherever we went, you know, he was always the star athlete and yeah. he was always this. And then it was me <laughs> you know and so um i mean even though at a certain point i i you know i was good in athletics and all that stuff you know but i was kind of to myself right. and um there were places you know and i like and taiwan I, what's that i mean taiwan i just loved it because uh we lived um we didn't live on base you know i guess taiwan it was just a freedom as a kid yeah. Because, you know, we didn't have to worry about, you know, anything. Like I said, we just would just go on adventures. And, you know, one time me and my brother got lost because we just like, you know, took off on the railroad tracks. 
And, um, but the only thing that, um, that was happening is that, um, you know, the Chinese had their ideas about black people. Oh. And so we would, uh, you know, as my mother was like, you know, don't let them, you know, just like they would want to touch our hair and rub our skin. Oh, no, are you? The, oh, yeah, if the black came off and, you know, and then they we, we, they would stare. And so uh, that's, that's, that, so how does that, how did that make you like feel at that as a kid? Well, you know, again, it's, is it normal? Like you? No, it was horrible. Ooh. And, uh, you know, it, it was kind of, uh, you know, horrible, you know, because my mom would, you know, constantly remind us you know, okay, they're going to stare, but, you know, don't let them touch your, you know, don't let them just touch your hair and see if the black comes off and all that stuff. And so it was, you but know. But you would think that their parents would say to them, well, don't this do is, that. These to were adults. These were not children. These were the adult. These were adult people. Oh but my. at that time, you know, I guess all they were seeing at that time was what they saw on TV and how they saw black people. Wow. And so, uh, you know, and so we just, you know, that's something that, you know, at a certain point is like, don't, like, yeah. you, know, you know, you know, don't do that. And so, you know, we kind of, you know, got used to it. But the one thing, you know, being a military kid, you know, because we lived in Taiwan and we lived in Japan. And even though, you know, we had those type of things, we felt the racism more when we came back home than we when we lived overseas which was in interesting. Damn. You know, because even though we were in our, you know, on the base, yeah, little, yeah, yeah. enclave, I mean, you had some, but I guess coming back to the States, you have more of that. And, you know, you have, you know, you see more of that because yeah. there was... Um, and, and also, in a way, in Thailand, it was... Taiwan. Taiwan, it was innocent. It was innocent. Right? Exactly. So you come back and to America. And I'm glad that you said that and, because and, a lot of people didn't see it that way. It was innocent. Yes. Damn. Mm -hmm. you and, just, I just learned something today, boy. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, and that, you know, that kind of shaped me. And then when we lived in Kansas, which was really a, you know, a learning experience for me, I was the only black kid in the school. No. The only black kid. Because, but you know, you know, I interviewed Donnell... And, uh, and uh, Brianna, mm -hmm. and they said the same thing almost. Right, right, right. And I'm older than them, and so, you know, yeah. but yeah, but I was, we, when we moved to Kansas, and... Uh, this is a great conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. This we moved is great. to Kansas, and uh, because that, yeah, it was me and my brother, because my sisters were older, and they had uh, two of my sisters, that they were married at the time, and so it's just me and my brother, and so uh, my mother, uh, the the people that were in the military again we couldn't move on base and so they were like okay this is the place you know where military personnel would live and it was like you know this little old house and my mother was used to when we we're in Japan and Taiwan you know the military gave us these nice big spacious spacious houses and so when we moved to uh, Kansas my mother was like I ain't moving in that little pillbox house and so we found <laughs> My mother and father looked and they found this house in the suburbs. It was called Derby, Kansas, off of Wichita. And, um, you know, and it was perfect for her furniture and perfect for, you know, what she, how she wanted to live. Um, you know, but we were the only black family in that little suburb. And at a point, you know, there were people that were writing letters to the landlord saying, you know, don't rent to them, don't rent to them. And I guess they said no. And so, but they rented to us anyway. And so I was in junior high school and my brother was in high school. And so in high school, um, that was that school was integrated because that's where a lot of the military kids went to. But the junior high was just for that little suburb. So the first couple of months was just absolutely hell, because first of all, I had to walk to school because they didn't have a bus. And then, you know, junior high, that seventh and eighth grade, you know, kids' hormones are bouncing off the walls, yeah, and, you know, yeah. and you have all that. And so, you know, for the first two months, I was in the eighth grade, but I would have some classes in the seventh grade. And, you know, the first couple of months, I mean, I thought my first name was the N-word. I mean, because that's, are you I mean, when I would just like, you know, go, go to the school, it's like, you know, I mean, walk the halls. And so... Um, 
And at that time, they, it was more, it was easier to say. And people oh, said it. oh my God, it was Kansas, so yeah. it was like you know, it was no thing that uh, you know that was. Uh, and how yeah. does how do you deal with that? How, what well, gets you through that? You know, for the first couple of weeks, I cried. I mean, I would just cry, and then uh, eventually, a friend I befriended, a, 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 a Sherry Malone, that's her name, and she Damn. lived down the street. Sherry Malone. I'll never forget Sherry Malone, and she lived down the street. She became my friend, so I mean that kind of helped, and um, and I'll have to say that's where I, I guess I found my, you know, some strength. Yes. Um, because I started taking uh, derbies, where I started taking dance classes. Uh, there was a little studio. Yeah, I know about your. Own dance. <laughs> well, I took you know at that point I was taking tap and modern and some gymnastics, and then I was um, you know pretty good. Uh, you know, I have to say I was fast. I was a fast runner. Yeah. And um, and so anyway, and then I mean, this is the I mean, I in, in this school of me being the only black, you know, I said, you know what? I'm going to try out for cheerleader. No, I did. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to try out for cheerleader, even though I know I'm going to get it. But I'm going to go. And plus, you had to. Um, when you tried out for cheerleader, That's you had amazing. to go before the whole school. Yes. And the whole gymnasium. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do this. And so, um, you know, I tried out for cheerleader. I didn't get in, but I got on the pep squad. And, uh, you know, but as you know, a little bit more as I gradually got into, you know, the school and people, you know, would see me. And then um, when we would have uh, track meets and I was winning mm. and then I think the kids, the other kids kind of embraced me in that way. Yes, of um, course. Because I was, you know, just like became a little bit more visible. But I mean, there was still, you know, the underlying little, you know, every once in a while you yeah, still, sure. you know, get that. But, um, but can you imagine you had, you were athletic and you could dance, right? And you can shit with a, can you imagine somebody who, that didn't have that, how they would, because cause that little bit of what you had makes them go, hey, whoa, that, what, exactly, now, that she, yeah. now she's cool, right? Right, exactly. That's what made, you know, like I said, I got on the pep squad Damn. and it's like, okay, she's, you know, at that point I, you know, we, the track thing hadn't started, but I got on the pep squad and then, um, you know, after that and then the, the track stuff started happening and I mean, I, and then I guess when I tried out for cheerleader, it was like, okay, so this is a bold little girl. Here. <laughs> and, you know, and I was, you know, I, and I had all that energy, but I guess, you know, as kids and whatever their mindsets were, it's like, okay, she can, but we ain't going to put her on the cheerleading squad, but it was of still course, like, but still, you know what? Yeah. She's visible. People knew who I was. The kids knew who I were and, you know, and. You know, and so, like you said, yeah, uh, you little know, steps you, here, little steps here yeah. and there. But can you imagine what it would be Ooh. like if someone who wasn't uh, as daring it, 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 or it hurts me to even think about? Right, it. you know, and so, uh, but that. But it shows your strength, your your determination, and it probably shaped you your life. A it bit. did. I mean, believe me. I mean, that's why I'm bringing it up because I think that experience really shaped. Um, a lot of who I am now. Of course. You know, I remember, and I, and I wrote this because uh, I, you know, wrote uh, a couple of solo pieces, but I wrote um, this little piece about that. I remember at in Derby, Derby High School, I mean, um, Derby uh, Junior High, it was doing, and this is going to age me, um, it was uh, Richard Nixon and, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Richard Nixon and George Wallace. They were running for president, and um, I forget um, who was running uh, for vice president. And so, but anyway, I just remember, you know, all the kids were for George Wallace. Yeah. And I had, and we, in my civics class, we had to give a speech about, uh, uh, you know, who we were voting for. And of course, it was not McGovern, it was um, Hubert Humphrey. Oh, yeah. And so it was just two of us, you know, who were, you know, had this speech about Hubert Humphrey. Everybody else was George Wallace. And these kids, I mean, they had, you know, the rebel flags right. and the banners of George, of uh, uh, George uh, Wallace and the whole thing. And, um, and I just remember that was, uh, 
you know, a pivotal moment for me also. Yeah. Um, you know, not to go along with, uh, you know, with everybody else and say, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, uh, just vote for George Wallace. But I'm like, you know what? You don't feel it. We ain't, you know, George Wallace is in Alabama and he's like, yeah. You know, the segregation is yeah. like, there's yeah. no way that I'm going to give, you know, my, my little speech about, uh, you know, George Wallace and so, but, you know, that experience in Kansas, it really, you know, because I think I was old enough to know and figure things out at that time. Is that when your dancing started? Well, yeah, it did. That's when I finally, uh, you know, convinced my... Because somebody said to me, ask her about choreography. Well, yeah, I mean, that's where, it, yeah, that's where I started taking dance class. And then um, when we moved to Delaware, because uh, that's where I uh, graduated from high school. And so when I was in, yeah, when I was in Dover, I, yeah, I kind of stopped taking dance class at that time. And then um, for college and my parents were surprised that I decided that I was going to be a drama major. They're like, where the hell did that come from? Oh, wow. Because what? I never, I mean, even though I was taking the dance classes, but I mean, I never was in drama classes. I never, you know, I mean, I was, I, in high school, I was um, the captain of my basketball team. Um, I ran track and I got to say, I'm going to pat myself on the back. I was um, a state champ in the high hurdles. Dang. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, how do, that's a that, that's tough to do. And, but you know, it was dance to me because it's like you know, with high hurdles, you yeah. just like went, you just like leaped, and so I was but like, okay, book. this is like dancing to me. And so, uh, wow. But why know. didn't you go in that direction? You know what? Because I think, in the back of my mind, I always wanted to be an actress, but I was afraid to verbalize it because I had this idea of what actresses should be because, you know, ha Catherine Hepburn was like my yeah, yeah, yeah. model of, you know, but I'm like, I don't look like her. I don't, you know, I'm not her. And so I was kind of afraid, you know, to verbalize this is what I wanted to be because I thought people would laugh at me, mm. you know, so I didn't, you know, really. Uh, and how old were you when you got finally got? Well, when I decided, uh, I think I was about uh, 17. When I said, you know, the hell with it, I'm gonna uh, go to college, I'm gonna declare that I'm gonna be a drama major. And again, like I said, they're going, where did this come from? Because I was, you know, the athletic things, and then I was, um, you know, really good in biology. And really? Things, you know, and things yeah. like that. So it's like, okay, do I become a doctor or do I become a teacher? And, but in the back of my mind, it's like, no, this is what I wanted to become because my mom, you know, my mom always had, you know, movie, you know, what the, what are those, photo play and all those movie oh. magazines. Oh, and, she did. You know, she had all yeah. that stuff. And, you know, and I, we would watch movies all the time. I mean, you know, on Saturdays, I mean, that was, you know, yeah. we watch movies all the time. I mean, I can tell you just like every black and white movie in the title because, I mean, that's what we did. Right. And so from watching that, like I said, in the back of my mind, I knew I wanted to be an actress, but I, I said, you know, I can't tell this anybody because they would laugh at me and so I finally said at 17 when I went to college and from like, 17 know, to what age did something hit as far as a job or like well it I mean even because I started 21 no wow 21 and then uh, a lot of stuff happened right with me you know mental institution all right sort of stuff. right uh, but that wasn't easy at 21 because I had already failed as a model. Mm. So now everybody's like, now he wants to be an actor. And then I have a nervous breakdown. Mm. Never, uh, you know, now he's, gonna, well, he's never going to do anything. But I had that thing that you have that I don't care. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, even in college when I declared myself as a drama major, you know, I was doing some of the, I was doing some dance stuff. And so most of the things, the productions I was doing was costuming oh, or stage managing. Yeah. And again, because there were some other act, you know, uh, um, students there that I felt were stronger actresses. And I was, again, afraid to compete with them, you know, because I thought they had, you know, so I w really wasn't auditioning for a lot of the Shakespeare pieces and, uh, you know, stuff like that. And so, um, so anyway, so after I graduated from college, which was in Virginia, Hampton University, 
I had moved to D.C. and, you know, trying to figure myself out because I was afraid to go to New York. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, you know, and I, when I talk about this stuff, you know, I had a lot of issues of being afraid, you know, the afraid. Really? Well, I mean, even though there was, yeah, there, yeah, there was I a get part it. of me I of get that it. stepping out, but it's like, you know, I was, you know, afraid to go to New York. I was afraid to say I want, you know, so there was like these things that... Uh, I'm with you with the fear. Yeah, the fear. I'm afraid. I, I'm, I also have that fear. But I, I always say that there's a part of me who is a scared little mouse, and there's another part of me that's like just this... Lion, right? Exactly. So you know, and it is the fear that I. My biggest fear is anxiety mm. now, but I think I'm getting better. Right. But that's a big fear. But you have the same fears. Well, I mean, I'm getting past it. I mean, it's something that I have to, um, you know, constantly work on <laughs> and just like have that conversation yes. because you know you find you know that fear. And, you know, you learn over the years. It's like once you face it and you get on the other side, it's like, what the hell was I afraid I know, of? I know. You know, but it's facing, yes. it's just confronting yes. that fear. Right. And it's, you know, so for me, it's a constant, you know, my mantra, you know. Um, well, how do you of, get, how do you do it? How do you get, just by your well, thoughts? Like I said, I, my thoughts and, you know, and I, my meditation in the morning, I mean, sometimes I have to say, know. you know, just let, let this be a day without fear. Let this be a Son, year without that's fear. That's interesting. You know, let this, you know, don't let the fear get in your way. And then at a certain point, you know, that other part of me, that, um, that, uh, that, yeah. that warrior, that lion, it's like, okay, just stop and just do it because you've been here before. Face it head on and get on with it. Don't yeah. let this, because that's another block. But it is the movie in our heads. Yes, I know I is. say it every state of right. mind, but it's the movie. Like my movie is when it, when anxiety is Freddy Krueger, right? Mm. And it's, the, it's, it's, it's that movie. We gotta change the movie. We gotta change the movie. Let's watch a, 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 a sweet movie, right. rated G. Right. We don't have to have it be The Exorcist. <laughs> right, you know, or yourself. Or, yeah. Or, you know, exactly yourself that you have this conversation. But we can change our thoughts. I mean, you can, you can, you, could, you can actually have a, a thought be, and then go to another thought. Right. It, or distract. Right, exactly. That's but, the way to do it, people. But you could, well, you distract, or then you just face it and go, or oh, face it, yes. You know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go through whatever it is that I have to go through. Yes, that's in true. In order for me to go to the other side. If yes, I, If I'm going to have true. to just like be in this place, I mean, once I face this fear, you know, if I'm going to be in this place, whatever yes. that is emotionally, let me just go through that crap. Yes. And then just like finally get to the other side. So yes. that's, you know, when I face it, it's like, you know, just, just go through it. And then eventually, you not you don't know how long it's going to take. I mean, it may take a minute, it may take two weeks, it may whatever, but you still have to go through it. Yes. And so that's the talk that I have that's to, right. you know, just like, and I'm still in, in, you know, at this point, it's like, you know, you're still having this conversation with yourself. It's like, yeah, that's you right. know, you are. I mean, accept you're human, it. you know, right. accept it. You know, you're still going to have that conversation. And so, uh, I mean, that was um, after I... Uh, I moved to DC because again, I was afraid to move, I was afraid to move to New York, so I moved to DC. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna go knock on the door of the DC black rep and start taking classes and I'm, I'm gonna do it. And I just remembered, I went up to the door and I knocked on the door and this guy, and again, I remember his name, Bill Pettis, and I said, you know, I'm here. And he's like, oh, come in. And so he's like, so I said, well, I, you know, when I go, he said, okay, uh, classes start on so-and-so. And I, wow. and it was like, you know, <laughs> this is what I was afraid of. Right, right. And, you know, and so I started taking classes with them. And, you know, once I started taking classes with them, I got in a couple of plays. We did something at the Kennedy Center. And it was like. All that, all that. All that anxiety and fear was for what? Right. But again, I. Yes. Faced it, and you know, and that was, uh, and I think you know, once I, you know, started taking classes with them and working with them, that was like, okay, now you're on track to kind of doing what yes. you want to do, and um, 
And then at a certain point I said, you know, I just gotta, you know, I'm, I can't afford New York because I, and in DC my apartment was cheap and I said, you know, I can't afford New York. I think I can get by in, in LA. And so when I told my parents I was gonna, you know, move to LA to pursue this acting, and my father, you know, he was, I called him, um, like Gary Cooper, the man of few words. <laughs> right. And he said to me, about time. Wow. Dang. And, it was like, and you probably felt like a weight off your back. Yep. Yep. And that just, and then you just propelled. And I just propelled. I drove my little. I was gonna say fucked up Volkswagen. <laughs> you can say. You I, can, I, I say. I can say fucked up. You can say. Fuck. I just drove up my. Me and my friend drove my little fucked up Volkswagen out here, and let me. You did Monster Ball. I'm, what is it? Ball? I did Moneyball. Yeah. How was that experience? You know, it was interesting. It was. Uh, Were you, you know, with Brad Pitt? It or was, any... uh, no, it was, my scene was with Brad Pitt, and uh, nice guy. Nice guy, and uh, you know, um, you know, he was like, "Okay, Joyce, this is what we're gonna do." And I'm like, is that oh. what he said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because it was like a quick scene because right. it was, uh, you know, when his daughter was going to the airport. And so uh, did you did you look at him and go, damn, he's good looking or just it was. No, just... I did. Because, you know, I was like, OK. Hell, yeah. He's like, he's cute. <laughs> he's told him what I thought. You know, he's cute. Because I remember when I got home, I was like, I called a family. It's like, OK, he's cute. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I just said, plus he used he's to nice. be with my manager. Really? So I, I talked to him a little bit twice. Right. And I said, yeah, he's cute. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> cute. I mean, he was smoking cigarettes. It's like I said, but he uh, smokes. He smokes uh, cigarettes. Yeah. And, um, you know, but it was like, okay, you know, let's do this. And this will be, I mean, he was, it was just so refreshing because yeah. he was like cool. That's cool. And it was, he you know, is cool. Yeah, it was like, you know, really cool. And it's like, okay, this is what it's going to do. We well, might do this, you know, let's do that. And it's like, okay. And I, and, you know, I wasn't, um, you know, I don't get, uh, you know, in those roles, I mean, I don't get starstruck and all no, that stuff. And just so, with me, you did. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, you also did Sunset Beach because Bob Guza, who wrote for GH for a long time, wow. did some great stuff, uh, Bob, with General Hospital. Really, I mean, just, um, how was that experience? I tell people, Sunset Beach was one of the best experiences I've ever had. No! Well, because my character, she was like a voodoo priestess. Oh! And so Bob Guza, whatever he was writing, he wrote stuff. I mean, some of the shit was hilarious. Ah. I mean, he would just like give my, you know, my mantra was, oh, you're bad to the bone. And so, um, <laughs> I mean, it was just this character, you know, was... You know, it was, it was that time when they had, uh, what was that woman that, um, that uh, I forget what she was selling, Ma uh, uh, Cleo, Madam Cleo or whatever Cleo. And so I guess they said, you know, let's put a voodoo priestess on, you know, on Sunset Beach. And so, um, and so anyway, it was just, uh, that's amazing. I learned a lot because again, you know, like GH, I mean, you just like, you come in, you do your yeah, one yeah, or two yeah. takes. And I mean, from Sunset Beach, I mean, that's how I, retain lines now yeah. because I mean, it made me just, you know, quick and, you know, and just, um, you know, it was just one of the best experience I've had in this industry. Damn, that's beautiful. Because again, like I said, the character was a lot of fun. Uh, they gave me um, a lot of freedom. I just remember because when I auditioned for Sunset Beach, I mean, that's when I found out because my brother had um, colon cancer. Oh shoot! And so I had uh, I had gone uh, a few months before I had gone to Africa. Me and two other friends we were like said, you know what, we gone to wow. Africa for like a month. And, yeah. You know, so we just like went to a few countries. And before, you know, I got on the plane, my sister had called and said, you know, my brother had cancer. It's like okay, great timing. You know, I'm getting ready to go to Africa for a month or whatever. And so. Um, came back home and so that's when I auditioned for Sunset Beach and my brother was, you know, um, you know, he was uh, basically dying. Damn. And so um, 
And that, you know, and when you're focused on that, you know, you're not thinking about other stuff. And no. so I remember I, you know, auditioned, you know, the first time and I was um, Carrie Greenspan. And so I was telling her because the character's name was Mrs. Moreau. And again, like I said, I, you know, I was, I'm like, okay, so the character, she's not Jamaican, she's Haitian. So she doesn't speak, you know, I'm, <laughs> you know, and I would walk away and just like, okay, did I say that? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so, I mean, because I had a clear you know, vision about who this person was, Mrs. Moreau, and it's like, she's not, uh, she's not uh, Jamaican, so she's Haitian, so she, well, she wouldn't have a Jamaican accent, she would have a Haitian accent, and right. you know, blah, 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 blah. And so I remember on the, they brought me back again for, I think it was the third audition, and the day that uh, my third audition, my mother had called and said, you need to come home because I don't know if your brother's gonna make it, you know, another week. You know, and I said, and I told her, I said, you know, I had this audition. I said, I don't know what's going to happen. And so I remember I went to the audition and, you know, I, you know, just in my another place, I did the audition and I said, you know, I, I said, let me stop to my agent's office. And so when I was at my agent's office and I said, oh, you know, Erica, I said, for some reason, I think I got this job. I said, my God. Wow. And, um, and I said, and I, I remember I started crying. I said, I can't take the job because I got to go home because my mother's expecting me tomorrow and you know because my brother and so while I was there I, Erica got the phone call that I had gotten the job and I mean I just was in tears and I you know because I said my mother you know my mother's expecting me tomorrow and you know the whole thing and so I went home and I called my mom and my mom was like you know okay well I'm like I don't know what to do. And she finally said, you know, go ahead and, and take the job. We don't know how long your brother's going to be around. So you um, got the job. I got the job. And then your brother was dying. And my brother was dying. So the days, and so I was shooting like three days, and then I would hop on the plane and go wow. to see my family. So I was able to, that, that uh, I had a break, and I was able to be for be there for my brother when he, when he passed away. What was the last thing he said to you? You know... He didn't because, like I said, he had colon cancer, and so there was a mix-up where they gave him, he was on morphine. And so they, he was at home, and so my sister-in-law was administering him a small dosage of the morphine, and he was, like, in pain. He was in the room, and he was, like, you know, in pain, and so she finally called the doctor, and, the, and she said, you know, I'm giving the this amount of morphine, and the doctor said, no, it's not 50 milligrams, it's 500. And so they oh. had, you know, my sister was like, oh my God, you know, that's why he's been in pain for a couple oh, of hours, man. and so they changed his dosage, and once they changed the dose, the higher dosage, he just was in another place. So, I mean, he really wasn't, uh, when I was there, he really wasn't talking, but I, but I remember when he finally quieted down, I went into his room by myself, and, um, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I went into his room and uh, he had a tear. No. There was a tear. And um, I just quietly walked out because uh, the woman, there was a, my sister in law had this woman who was um, a minister, and you know, she came and she said, you know, Guys, let him be a little quiet because with all of you around, he's not he he's gonna want to hang on longer. Mm, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, um, but anyway, so I just went in and she said, "Okay, you know, let him, you know, be at peace." And so I went outside and, um, you know, and about uh, you know we came back in and you can tell his soul had left, mm -hmm. you know, his body. And so um, my sisters and we were all there. For him, I wasn't there for my dad, but I mean, all of us, my all my family was there. You know, when he passed away, I continued to show. But I had a com, you know, after you know, a few years later, I had a conversation with Dominique Jennings. That was the person that I had most of the scenes that I was putting the spell on her because she was trying to get, a, you know, the husband of whatever. And so, you know, me and Dominique were talking, and she said, you know, she said, Joyce, she said, I thought it, you didn't like me, you know, when we when we started. I said, Oh, Dominique. I said, No. I said my brother was dying. Damn, see, that's the thing. No, we never know what somebody is going through. We think somebody's a bitch. Exactly. Or a jerk. 
and we don't really know what they're like this is exactly the situation you may have been quiet because you're thinking of your brother's exactly. dying yep so focused and you know when we cut i would just kind of yeah you know, of course. Go, you know go to that place and then and i'm like oh dominique i said it was quite the opposite i yeah. said you know at that time i said you know and of course i wasn't you know, I didn't know anybody well enough, and you know how was actors are. We go into our, of course, in our space, and so I said, "Yeah, I mean, really, he wasn't talking." I said, "But that's what was going on." I said, "No." Yeah. Now we can't end this without talking about General Hospital, of course. Of course not. So you come into a storyline, and let let me let me just set it up. It was a storyline that was kind of in its own island. We weren't even part of what was going on. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say it frank. Audience wasn't really that into it at all, okay? Which I believe made it for us like, we just do what we do. We're just gonna do. We're yeah. gonna have fun. Right. We're gonna do good work and there's no pressure, right? Uh, well, I didn't feel that, you felt that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and it was, yeah, you were just... Well, at a certain point, you know what? I mean, I at a certain point, I just... Uh, because, again, like I said, it was... Uh, because I think uh, you were so real and honest. Yes. And I think that's what kind of, um, you know... Set this, the, the, the paint. tone yeah, and just yeah. like and took away whatever you know. Yes, what I, I was. I feeling. love it. I, that's what I love. I love about it, and that's what I love to do. Right. Yeah. I just let everybody know. Look, we're gonna just talk here, which is like kind of like this. Right. This right. isn't an interview. We're just right. Having, right. We're, we're having conversation, and now. that's what we did. Right. And the beauty of it is, as it went along, you know, even though the audience and I know because I know, <laughs> I, have, I have a thing with the audience. It wasn't really, you know, but but when Lenny Lenny died, I th there was a shift. Oh, definitely. And the audience started to go, uh, let me pay attention a little bit to what's going on because right. this is kind of where you did a scene. And it was at the, you know, I think I told you, but I'll tell you again. My dad. Mm. had Alzheimer's at the same time I did this Alzheimer's story and it was you know so I, I, I kind of wasn't really acting was just saying the lines as, as it was living it and then Lenny Lenny is uh, Riff Hutton Riff Hutton you guys were just amazing but he was on and then he, the, Lenny dies and Lenny died of pancreatic cancer yeah. And my dad just mm. died of pancreatic cancer. So at the same time, in both stories, it's the same Right, illness. going in the same time, yeah. And when Lenny died, Joyce did a scene that I wasn't in. I, I, was, I had gone in with Nina into the bar, and she cried. And it was a guttural cry. And it was, she, I, I would say she should get a supporting actress nominee. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna vouch for that. Be not just for that, for that, but that moment was powerful and just the work she's done. Um, because you know, and I, and I just have to, uh, I am, you know, honored that you know Frank, you know, when he offered me the job, because he, uh, because I didn't have to audition, which was great. Wow! And because he had saw something I did uh, on Animal Kingdom, I did an episode of Animal Kingdom. I love with, Animal. Uh, yeah, with uh, Ellen Burstyn. And, yeah, I love that. Oh my God! It was it was again cool another, show. Another fun role where I played this uh, black yeah. biker chick, and it was just fabulous. And anyway, so Frank, you know, hired me from that, and so. Um, you know, but again, I started off with this other thing where Nina was trying to find out the nurse who just like took her baby yeah, and the thing, yeah. and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to come and nail this. This, you know, I'm going to come and nail this. That 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 uh, that this, the two scenes or whatever scenes that I did, and then when they moved me, you know, to Nixon Falls, it's like, okay, so okay, this is interesting, you know. But what I, you know, liked, I said, you know, um, I'm going to make 
the relationship with Lenny and Phyllis, you know, this loving black couple, you know, at the time, I didn't know that, you know, he was going to, that he was going to have yeah. cancer, but I said, you know, what? I'm going to make, yeah. you know, their yeah. relationship, you know, this loving older black couple and just make this as real and yeah. fabulous as possible. And then at a certain point, you know, with Cynthia and then you and then Riff, and it was almost like we became yeah. this unbelievable force. Or yeah. I mean, I, I can't even just force him. It would be better. Force him. Yeah. I mean, but it was just uh, because it, I was happy to come to work. Yeah. I was. It was yeah. excited to come yeah. to work, and you know, and. And I would tell people, it's like, you know, I went, you know, we, we, you know, we did the thing and we just nailed it in one or two takes. Yeah, and yeah. We, I, it was just, oh, yeah. I mean, it, things were just yeah, happening and it was just exciting to do, like you said, in this, oh, you know, storyline that people were not necessarily, you know, no, no. kind of vibing into. But we were in this place of doing the work yeah. and it was comfortable because, you know, I, for me, I felt, you know what? I can give Phyllis life with ease and comfort yeah, and, that's I, the way it should and be. I can take chances and I can, you know, I, if I, I can be unafraid. Yes. And the I fear. And was what gone. you're saying is what, this is what I tell actors, actors that I, that I like, that I care about. Other actors, I just stay quiet. <laughs> I say, if you if you feel like you're working hard, it's not working. And that's what uh, I do with you or whoever, or Cynthia or Laura, or whoever. I, it shouldn't be work. Because then it's not going to come across on the screen. Right. And what you're saying is absolutely perfect. Because that's the way it should be. Right. Um, I mean, because even the, sin, the scene with Lenny, you know, when he, that, that, you know, when I cried yeah. and the whole thing. And I tell people, I said, you know, Yes, I mean, it was Phyllis and, you know, her husband. I said, but part of it was real because I was sad to see uh, Riff go. I know. And so that was also part of the, that the, guttural yeah, yeah, because yeah. it was like, you know, I've never experienced, the, you know, the, 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 you know, when a character leads yeah. and, you know, being a part of that. Yeah. And so... Um, you know, so that was also part it's, of it. Yeah. Relaxation is the key. Yes. When, you know, I, I'm now, I've never, in my career, I've never been relaxed as I've been in the last year, let's yeah. say. And that's wow, it. Wow, the last year? Yeah, that's it. I'm wow. always fucking just nervous. And mm. st in the last year, now, if I have anxiety or stuff, then I'm screwed, but. I've been relaxed. I know what that relaxed is. Mm -hmm. And you do your best work. You do. Because, you know, I just told somebody. I'm doing this thing now with the bipolar and manic. And I've done it a lot. I've done it in a movie that we produced. Mm. But this is, it, as I watch, this is, I think, the closest I've gotten to the reality of it. And why is that? Because it's always been pretty good writing all the time. Right. It's because I'm just relaxed. relaxed. Yeah. All right. Let's let's. I think we've we've concluded. We're going to conclude this <laughs> state of mind. I, let me let me just end this by saying to Joyce that uh, I learned a lot about her. Obviously, because we don't have that that the conversations like this, um, and it was some beautiful insight. But I really appreciated this. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank I you. love you. That was great. It man. was great.